everybody wants to stand out from the pack, and there are lots of ways you can do it with these late model Mustangs. Well, like this old five that stands out thanks to a pair of 10 inch stripes that start from the bottom of the front air dam and extend all the way back here to the lower bumper cover. It belongs to the wife of one of our buddies in a local Mustang club. And when it leaves here today, it's in a standout from the pack in horsepower too, thanks to a hot new version of an old favorite power adder. Nitrous oxide has been around since well before the first hot rod. And even today, it's still the most budget friendly way to make big horsepower. And thanks to new innovations, it's a lot easier to use and install. Now this is a Nitrex triple threat EFI system we got from Summit Racing. And among the cool features it's got is this thing right here. Now get this, it's got solenoid valves for fuel, nitrous, and even a purge all in this easy to install billet box. Well, it's got other features we'll show you as we install it, but hey, you know the drill here. Before we do anything else, we got to get a baseline on that dyno jack. Except for louder aftermarket mufflers, this GT is totally stock. And the factory 4.6 engine, of course, is rated at 300 horsepower at the flywheel. So our rear wheel baseline of 268 is just about right. Nitrous is a cryogenic liquid with a high vapor pressure and must be kept at a minimum of 745 PSI to remain a liquid at room temperature. When nitrous is sprayed into an engine, you get a double effect of an oxygen-rich intake charge and very cold, dense air charge. The higher air density and oxygen percentage allow you to burn more fuel and make more power. The ideal place to mount a nitrous bottle on one of these late model Mustangs is here straddling the rear subframe back in the trunk. Now, the kit comes with rubber isolated well nuts that expand when you tighten them. This kit comes with a 0 to 1500 PSI gauge for the bottle, which is usually a separate purchase for other setups. Plus, it uses these quick clamp brackets for mounting. This car's trunk has a small access panel that's perfect for running the nitrous line. Now, you should route it to the engine following the fuel line and, as always, avoid heat sources. Now we can get busy under the hood by mounting the triple threat using these cool brackets from the kit. Now, you can bend these things and twist them any way you want from multiple mounting positions. Now, we're going to use the strut tower here, which is an odd shape, but we're also going to incorporate this bracket to mount it. For safety, it's always a good idea to run a fuel pressure safety switch when you run a nitrous system. Now this one came in the Nitrex kit and it'll shut the flow of nitrous off if the fuel pressure drops below a certain point. In our case, it's 33 PSI and this thing bolts to a gauge port on the side of the Nitrex block. It connects to a gauge fitting on the side of the triple threat block. And remember to use your thread sealant here. Next we can connect the nitrous feed line we just routed and this rubber fuel delivery line from the kit. For this next step, use your safety glasses and a rag as you remove the two bolts on the factory fuel pressure sensor. The rag is to soak up any pressurized fuel that leaks out. Now install the sensor on top of the fuel rail adapter and bolt them down with longer bolts from the kit. Now attach the fuel line from the triple threat block to the fuel rail. Next, we need to remove the air inlet tube. Drill a hole and install the nozzle adapter. With the tube back in place, we can now install the NT nozzle, making sure the nozzle opening points towards the throttle body. Our first nitrous jet is for a 75 horse shot, then the appropriate fuel jet. And connect our red and blue lines to the NT nozzle. Then route and connect both lines to the block. Well, next up, the wiring, which for some people ranks right up there with a root canal for fun things to do. But with this kit, it's surprisingly easy. 
It all starts with the relay, which handles the electrical load and protects the circuits. And guess what? Color-coded and labeled. Life is good. Now let's find a place to put it. And the firewall is a good spot for that. Now the black wire goes to the battery positive terminal. The green wire ties into the nitrous and fuel solenoid wires. The white's a ground that first goes to the fuel pressure safety switch. Then another white wire goes to a ground location. And the bracket mounting bolt works just fine. That leaves the red wire for the wide open throttle switch and a yellow wire from the block for the purge switch, both going inside the car. With the wires pulled through the firewall, we're ready to install our wide open throttle switch. Now normally this would go in the engine compartment next to the throttle linkage, but since the 05 and newer Mustangs run a fly-by wire system from the throttle pedal, we're going to mount this thing under the dash behind the pedal. Now using the access panel for the emergency brake cable, drill two holes using a unibit to mount the arming switch, its cover, the purge switch, and its button cover. Now we can wire up the arming switch and the purge switch. And reinstall the cover. The kit also comes with this cool adapter that will allow us to pull our 12 volt ignition source to our switches from the power outlet on the dash. Now you could go underneath with a test light and find a wire off of your keyed ignition source, but the chances are it being a full 12 volts are kind of slim on newer vehicles. So don't take any chances and use the adapter. Well now that we got the power to spray that GT Pony, we're just a little purge kit away from making how much horsepower? We'll all find out right after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Horsepower. When you see racers purge their nitrous systems at the drag strip, well, they're just making sure the nitrous line is full all the way up to the solenoid and ready to release when they mash the gas. Well, our nitrix setup comes with its own purge kit too, which is usually bought separately. Now here's a cool feature. This flexible metal line fits inside this rubber tubing that's going to keep it cooler in the engine compartment and give you a more dramatic looking spray. Oh, remember these bendable brackets we used earlier? Well, they come in handy for this purge nozzle. And that's the first thing to go on. Since we don't want to cut any holes in this car, we're going to mount ours here behind the grill. Then we simply route our purge line from the triple threat block all the way up to the purge nozzle. Of course, we want to take our time. Make sure we tuck it away really good so you can't see it. Then after we connect the line and tighten it up really good, we can send it back home in the grill. Then using a self-tapping screw, it's in place. The ideal bottle pressure is 900 to 950 PSI, which requires a temperature of about 85 degrees. So we're adding just a little heat to ours before this first nitrous run. Remember, we're starting with nozzles for a 75 horsepower shot. Oops. <laughs> you always want to start low and gradually move up. And we're already up 54 horsepower over our baseline. In case you were wondering which jets to use for a given horsepower shot, all you need to do is know your vehicle's constant fuel pressure, and you can look at the supplied chart in the kit, and that'll give you the correct number of jets for both fuel and nitrous. Okay, with that nozzle change we just made, we're up to a 100 horse shot for this second power run. Very cool, 346. Yep, over 322. 22, another 25 shot. Man, right that's right 25. on the money. It is. Should we go for another one? Let's go to 125 and then end it there. That'll be safe yeah, for this that, car, stock yeah, bottom end in that. That's right, that'll be plenty. Yep. All right. Although our kit will give us a peak 175 horsepower shot, 
We're playing it conservative. This is somebody else's car after all. So this 125 shot of spray will be our final run. Okay, we got a little bump out of that shot, about seven horsepower up to 352.85 over our baseline of 268.55. That's about 85 horsepower for a day's work. $720 for the triple threat kit in the Summit catalog. Not yeah. bad, man. Hot pony. Yeah. All right, nitrous trivia time. All right. First ever use of nitrous and what for? It was used in dentistry back in around 1844, and Dennis actually tried it out while having a tooth extracted. Not bad. All right. First ever use of nitrous to enhance an engine's power. World War II, German fighters and bombers. The bombers used it for help taking off. The fighters used it for dog fights. You should know that. You were in one of those things. We're going to take a short break while I murder this little creep. I'll be right back, though. <laughs> hey, why don't you take me to the, uh, the museum where that old plane is? <laughs> no, no, you can't. <laughs> Build on a budget. Horsepower projects that save you time and money. Let's say you just finished spending your hard-earned bucks on an engine swap in your ride, and now you need a place to store your old engine. Well, you don't want it laying around on your garage floor with a wood block under the balancer, because let's face it, if you have to move it, you're asking for a hernia. Aftermarket engine cradles like this can run you anywhere from $60 to over $200. But today, I'm going to show you how to make one for less than $30, and all it takes is a few basic tools. What you'll need for the job is a 3 16 inch thick square plate, four casters, a right angle gauge, a tape measure, a square, a 10 foot length of one inch square tubing, and a sawzall. But hey, if you've got the luxury of a bandsaw, it works great for cutting the square plate. We need to start by cutting two 25 inch pieces for the side of the perch base. Then cut two 17 inch pieces for the front and rear of the base. Now weld these pieces together to form a rectangular base for the perch and make sure it stays square. Now cut four mounting legs to 11 and 3 quarter inches. Using the motor mount bolt locations, find the angle you need with an angle finder. Mark and cut the legs to the correct angle. Then using the steel plate, cut four mounting pads and drill them using a 7 16 inch bit. With the leg tacked in place, make sure it's square before welding. Now mount the rear tabs and weld the legs the same way. Now we can lower the base even with the front legs and make sure it's level. Now weld the base to the legs and cut the excess of the rear legs and tack the locator nuts onto the base. Here you can leave it raw or give it a touch of color of your choice. With the cradle bolted back to the block, drill four holes that will accept your casters. Finally, bolt the casters into place. Here comes my hernia. All right, again, you're gonna save 40 to $100 or even more. Plus, you're gonna have the satisfaction of building it yourself. And who knows, you may be able to recoup the money from your materials when your buddies see it and want you to build a few for them. Hey, welcome back. You know, that was a pretty cool engine cradle that Galley just made, but 
Let's say you got a motor you want to drop onto one of those cradles, and well, unless you're the Incredible Hulk, you're going to need a lift plate. Let's make one. All you need is some 3 16 steel plate, cut one piece six and a half by six, another six and a half by three. You also need a hole saw kit, a drill, oh, can't forget this, a carb gasket. You see, the gasket is your template for marking bolt holes for a mounting flange and you can use more than one gasket if you're going to use different carbs. Now drill your holes with a 3 8 inch bit. Then we use a 1 and 3 8 inch hole saw to drill evenly spaced holes in the other plate. Now these will be the holes that lift the engine. I think I'm burning this thing up. There. Next, making sure it's centered, Weld the plate with the holes to the main plate. Now, if you plan on lifting heavy engines, weld in some lateral braces between the plates for extra strength. What's next? Nothing but paint. Well, it looks like we got some kind of color theme going here. Now, you're not going to save a whole lot of money with this deal, but hey, the tools were already out for the engine cradle build, and you did it yourself. And that ought to be good for some kind of lift, right? Looks pretty too. We get a lot of comments on our trademark checkered floor here in Horsepower, but got to tell you, we have discovered something that's a lot more practical to give your concrete shop floor a great look and a protective, durable finish. You coat it makes these complete do-it-yourself kits that give commercial grade results. Now you get all the product you need, all the tools, even down to the protective glasses and gloves. After cleaning your floor thoroughly, you first apply the bond coat with the supplied brush and rollers, let it dry, then the U-coat finish coat is applied to provide a beautiful, solid color, durable finish. A finish that will protect against oil, gas, brake fluid, you name it. You've got a choice of seven different base coat colors and you can even add flakes for an extra touch. Either way, you get a lifetime warranty against peeling, blistering, or even hot tire pickup. You can pick up your own U-coated kit with prices starting just a shade over 200 bucks. Well, we've reached the finish line of this week's Horsepower Show. I think I'll go out and fly my P-51 fighter plane. See you next week.